Okay, so here I am inside of um, After Effects, and it's worth mentioning um, the things, um, uh, the kind of mistakes that I went from. Uh, I actually did a mistake of where um, I thought uh, I'd be using a break, but it was too cheesy. The break, <laughs> it was just too cheesy. I didn't want it. Um, there was another instance again, where I rendered again. Um, to, to make it flow even more, but I never really liked it. I rendered the cell, just like I told you guys. Um, I did the line um, for glasses. Um, I did this uh, render as well with the lines, and then um, I did only this. Uh, the way I did this was uh, pretty simple. Um, so if you go here, create a new material, I'm just gonna apply it on uh, uh, this now. Uh, you can see that it's a little bit dark, so what I went was, uh, <clears throat> I just went and um, I did, uh, I remember, I think I did silver, yeah, there we go, silver. Um, so I just wanted this uh, silvery, I just wanted this silvery look, so I just went and I rendered that, uh, just because I had a little bit of time, so I could spare. Um, I did another iron with uh, just a different light, um, I did this, but I ended up not using it and of course I did the winds as uh, as uh, I thought you guys you see it's the same turbulence and stuff like that just like I showed you just now cool um, getting all that in um, it was pretty simple so what I did was uh, let me show you how I actually started so the first thing that I did was uh, I created a background as you can see here, uh, it's a very simple background. One thing you know about me is uh, I don't like the complete super black background, so I go with the black and then I go with a little bit of blue because that's the mood that I was going for. Um, but this one I added later. So I just created uh, this. Let's go inside. Um, so basically what this is, um, this is the, the main one. This is where I rendered this and I just added a deep glow on top okay with these values I just added that and I was like okay cool now we can add a little bit of lines so these is the line glass so I'm just showing you how I exactly went one by one so I did the line by doing a tint so this is what it is and by doing a tint blue then you go on you get this uh, really beautiful side and the thing about this is that I did not want it to cover everything because if I don't do this this is how it's gonna look and it doesn't really look that beautiful so I just went and I did a uh, inverted okay so that's it screen it and now you get this beauty and all these things is beautiful it's just because of the deep glow all right that is done I went and I added uh, the the iron that I told you so I just went and added it on top using just screen. So as you can see, you just add. It's just that it's not so empty, so it looks a little bit filled. And then it gives me that beauty on the side when it comes to the iron. And it gives me this thing on top. So that's that's what I'm looking for. Cool. Um, I just went and I duplicated exactly the same thing again, but with a higher... Um, Capacity, as you can see, cool. So that's it. Um, uh, the particle ones I added it later. Um, then we have the cell, and uh, I just want to show you how I use the cell. Um, this one here, how I use this one. Um, basically, what I did was I went and I actually, um, as you can see here, um, I'm just gonna go and uh, take all this. Cool. So I inverted it because I normally get it like this, so I just inverted it. And uh, I did a linear color key so that I can remove the, the black from it. And I just I did some colors, these colors, and I put them one on top of another. And then I did a deep glow. So here's what you get. So blue goes to purple, goes a little bit hardish purple, then it comes back to blue. And then, of course, you do a deploy. Now you get that. Okay, so now this is what I have. That's perfect.
once I have that, what I did was uh, I added a little bit of optical flare, as you guys know. Uh, it's just this thing here. Um, basically, what this is, I normally never use any presets inside of uh, um, inside of optical flare. I like to use my own um, uh, custom objects, and uh, which is this, this, and this, and uh, that's all I need for this. So, yeah, I just went and uh, I animated the position and the brightness. There we go. So you can see here. Uh, the whole trick about this was uh, this thing here. This is the whole secret. So this is your optical flare. But then when you combine it with chromatic aberration, you get a very beautiful dispersion. Uh, alone, it looks really bad. Never use it alone. But um, with uh, everything else, it's just going to look so beautiful, as you can see here. And it looks very uh, different from your typical optical flare. So you see, the difference is really high. There we go. And then it leaves that kind of small chromatic aberration going on. So yeah, basically that's uh, that's what happened. And then I went back. So this is what we have now. OK, cool. So we have that thing there. Um, I added uh, this background here to show that we have something. As you can see, um, it adds a little bit of atmosphere, just a little bit. And what I have here, it's only the iris. OK. Uh, I have this, and then I duplicated it. Again, as I told you, the logo is made of two same things. So I just duplicated it. I just pushed it and offset it. And now we have two different logos. OK, for, for speed, I'm just going to turn this off. And uh, I added a little bit of a. Uh, uh, camera uh, imperfections here, as you can see. I added another imperfection here and added another lens distortion here. And to hide everything, I just went here and I added this Hollywood thingy. This, uh, this thing right here. Let me show you. Yeah, just to hide things that I did not like. OK, um, I went and I added uh, another optical flare in the beginning just to show you that it's about to start. So it doesn't just come in just like that. Um, it, it, it brings up that uh, anticipation that something is about to start, as you can see. So it doesn't just start. Um, I added a lot of color correction in here, like a lot. Um, I did a bit of curves. Um, curves to control the light and highlights. I added a little bit of vibrance to bring up uh, a little bit beauty of that blue as you can see here. So here it looks washed out and I use uh, vibrance so that I can bring out whatever contrasty colors that we had. I added a little bit of grain because I really love having grain on top. Um, I did a radial blur here just to show that this is going super fast. So yeah. Um, radial blur and I added a bit of a camera lens blur that is animated I believe so during uh, different steps of the of the camera to show that the camera is trying to focus on the on the <clears throat> on the on the logo and with all the power that is happening and the wind and stuff like that so the camera is going to be shaken it's not going to really um, be focusing on the logo until everything is passed like the the wind is passed so the camera has been animated according to this when I added it. OK. Perfect. Um, the last thing that I did was uh, another camera lens blur. But this one is just for uh, focusing on the main logo. This is not animated. This is just uh, like uh, just what it is. Here, the mask animation is just to because you see in the beginning, I want you to focus on that anticipation, and as the the logo is forming, you can see that I'm trying to make you follow the logo formation. See that? So you don't look at anything here. You just look at here. Uh, of course, we have a fade in in the beginning. <clears throat> All right, so that is done. I went and uh, I added this thing when I had time. So this is when I had time 
when I had time because I finished this uh, in way over an hour, uh, before an hour. So I went and I added this uh, particle. So basically what this is, I'm just gonna show you. It's really hard to see now, but you can see them here. I'm just gonna increase it so you can see here. So it's just particles that are in the background. You don't really see them, but they're there. And uh, see, they are way behind. And uh, I just went, I duplicated that and I put it here because I want them to be in front. I'm just gonna show you. Oh, this is the, the particle formation here. Yeah, so basically what this is, just to show you, um, it's a, it's very, 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 um, it's hard to see, but it's there. Um, I'm just gonna show you this, uh, this technique. So basically, if you open a new composition, uh, it's gonna particle lesson. There's this thing here. Um, let's just uh, take something. Uh, let's just take this break pass, okay? Let's just take this break pass. Uh, for example, you want to create particles all around these, but you don't want to spend time again inside of um, <clears throat> inside of Cinema 3D. So what you do basically, I'm just gonna turn this off. Okay, so basically what you do, I'm just gonna create a new solid, and I'm gonna call in particular. Okay. So once I get particular, I'm just gonna go somewhere where I can see everything. Okay, um, I'm just gonna pre-compose this. And I'm gonna make it 3D, I'm gonna turn it off. Now, what I'm gonna do here, uh, I'm just gonna go, <clears throat> and instead of points, I'm gonna say to emit from layer. And inside my layer, I'm gonna go and bring in that layer here. Now, particular is gonna put them here, but I don't have enough. Now I have, and uh, if you wanna see well, you can see that they are there. See? Cool. So basically what happened is now they're going to be following exactly what I do. But the problem why they're moving is because the velocity is 100%. But if the velocity doesn't move, you'll see that they're actually just forming. You see here? They're going all around. So that's basically what I used. And uh, if you want them to actually go and leave like uh, some kind of wisp or something. So what I did was uh, I gave them a life. Okay. And um, random, random, cool. Uh, and then what I did was inside of physics, you have this air here. And what happened is you, you see, you can control how your particles are actually going to leave. So I can just add more of a cool. So actually, that's the only thing that is uh, visible. So as they are born, they're actually leaving as well. If you can see that. Uh, and if I go and decrease this to one, you'll be able to see that effect even more prominently is that once they are born, they're actually leaving. But then uh, the thing that you don't really see here, it's because, um, okay, let's go like this. So now what's gonna happen is we're gonna have particles that only are born when this is born. So then you're gonna see this effect really well. You see that? They're born and they're, they just leave. So if you increase actually the wind like that and they'll be able to leave and then if you can random the opacity. Now the, the problem here is that I'm using uh, a non-colorful one. So they're black because they're emitting from the color of the, um, they're emitting from the color of the, 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 the layer. But if I try and change this to just be lightness and size, I'll be able now to, to go inside my particle and be able to you know, um, random from gradient, for example, and then inside this uh, gradient, I can choose the, p the, the the colors that I had, for example. Okay, uh, they're a little bit small, so I just have to increase the life so you can see them. Perfect, and now I can just add a deep glow to make this even more beautiful. There we go. So now I have this, uh, I'm just gonna show you. So as they're born, 
they they actually leave isn't that beautiful i think it is okay so this is uh this is the thing and you should also remember hold on i'm going to show you something you should also remember that you could also replace these particles with uh, something like this you know with textures like this uh you could put some data you could put some data sign uh some numbers you can put things like this you know um to show you i'm just gonna go and open a new i'm gonna say texture prt uh it's gonna be uh 200 by 200 uh probably even smaller say 100 to 100 um and th this is uh the size of our particle i'm just gonna say bubble um then okay so this is purple okay and uh for this one uh it's gonna be a circle like that okay and for this one i'm gonna use uh i don't know maybe a plus let's go with a plus um just gonna make it a little bit bigger i'm just gonna put it here there we go all right then um, inside here, no, no, here, here, I'm gonna go texture particle. I'm gonna hide it. <clears throat> inside here of particles, um, you have particle, so particle type. You've got sphere. You can change this to whatever you feel like. But I'm gonna go to um, sprite. And inside sprite, I'm gonna go to texture. I'm gonna say this is the texture that I want you to replace. Okay. And I don't want it to be random loop. I just want random steel frame. So uh, it just plays problem is that the size the size is a is a problem now so I'm just gonna go and increase the size a little bit higher cool so now you can see that some particles are gonna be like that but uh, I think we need to go make this even bigger just go to um, 200 by 200 um, let's just increase the size of all of these guys so in here, okay. Just increase the size of this. Perfect. So as you can see here, so the particles are going to be replaced by, uh, as you can see, these uh, other texture particles that we just did. So this is very dirty. Normally we spend more time on this, but yeah, there we go. You got it. So that's how I created that. Um, the um, little thing here. Cool, and um, that is done. Um, that was uh, that was uh, that was pretty much it, to be honest. Um, I hope you enjoyed this um, this uh, very quick, dirty, uh, how to save time <laughs> working on animating a logo. If there is anything, you could just let me know. And I wish you all the best. Stay safe. And uh, my name is Mr. Popo. And we are Popo. Keep pushing pixels and I'll see you on the next one.